Marriage has always been sold to us as this wonderful next step in life. But in reality, for millions of men, it will be the worst mistake they ever made. Friday the 13th of July 2018, my wife informed me that she wants a divorce. District judges have almost unlimited discretionary power over you in family court. The judge says, even if you win, you have to pay. I know men who have gotten really f***ed over in divorce. I lost $106,000 out of my 401k retirement plan I spent 20 years contributing to. I had a friend whose wife, ex-wife, dragged it out on purpose because she wanted him to pay the legal bills. And that means some attorneys just putting in a lot of frivolous motions to delay the case. We took out an equity line of credit at my parents' house, and that's been maxed out now. Uh, I think it's $250,000. I also lost half the equity in the home, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, cash, and savings that I also spent 20 years contributing to. I don't want this. I don't want to be divorced. And this is the only time in my life where I legit felt like a failure. So he had to pay for her lawyer. He had to pay for his lawyer and then he had to pay for all of the times that she decided to change the goalposts. I'm now broke, live in a two-bedroom apartment, and have a negative net worth. And I ended up going through bankruptcy. What they do is bleed you until all the money is gone. Be careful because the consequences can be severe. One of the biggest problems in family court is there are so many false accusations. There's attorneys that will, every single case, oh, he's abusive and controlling, we need a protective order. In fact, there is no violence, but they make it up. If you really do a good job, then you can get him kicked out. Now you're in the house. Of all my friends who've gotten a divorce, 80% of them, if they have kids, the wife accuses the husband of the kids. Oh boy. This just might be my most important video to date, since this video is really a serious warning aimed to inform every single man out there who is still contemplating a legal marriage of what you're actually getting yourself into, since there's a lot more to it than just losing half your assets and that prenups will save you. You go get a prenup and you think everything's great. Well, you better make sure you know exactly what you're doing because the big game now is who can bust the prenup? By the way, if you missed that last part of the intro, he was not talking about being accused of hitting the kids. No, he was using the M word as in accusing the father of your children of being a P word. Now that is next level evilness. In order for her to get the house, the kids and a fat alimony check every single month. One alimony tip can end up paying you hundreds of thousands of more dollars but I do have good news since there is a utopian solution, albeit somewhat unorthodox, that can actually protect you from a world of pain, which I will share with you later on in the video. Now before we continue, it's important to note here that I'm actually not a hater of marriage itself. I was actually raised Catholic and I still think that a sincere marriage before God can actually be a beautiful thing. However, I also studied aerospace engineering and that sort of messes up the whole Catholic thing as in blindly believing something or jumping into something when the overwhelming data is telling you to run like hell. I just can't get with our system making men, and I say men again because it's majority, being penalized from keeping a home or buying a new home because they are paying for their exes to live in the home that they had or to pay for a new home that the ex had. You got $1,700 after you made, what, like $30 million on that tour. What the hell happened to the money? It's called a divorce. <laughs> a lot of people go into debt as a result of their divorces. Courts are biased against men receiving alimony. It's just the truth. In Florida, the court can order the payor spouse of alimony to obtain a life insurance policy to secure his or her alimony obligation. Wait, what? So not only are you paying alimony and child support, now you're ordered to go and get life insurance on yourself, all so that your ex can get paid when you die? This is absolutely insane, and it shows yet again how every single thing in the divorce process is incentivizing women to get a divorce. Please explain to me the benefits of marriage today. It's only because of religion, to be honest. It's a promise to God. Yeah. Does a man benefit from that? Yes, he does. If he is religious, if he's spiritual, whatever it is, it's that promise. I think apart I from never, that, it literally is just a business contract with the state. It's basically saying if anything happens to this relationship, you're going to need us. It's a contract with the state. It affords you married couple benefits and privileges, but I don't even know what those are anymore. 
You see, marriage is simply no longer what it used to be, and if you're still playing by the old school rules in this new school world, you're going to lose, and you're going to lose hard. Get the alimony. Listen, get the alimony. Basic mechanisms that exist in the criminal and civil courts in this country don't exist in the family court. Why drag it out for two years? Why? So the two lawyers could keep making money, that's why. New York divorce industry, that's billions of dollars. I said to the litigants, I want you to know, after two hours, we will have spent more than most people in this courthouse make in a year. Yup, that's what you're up against. Please drop a like on the video if you think that legal marriage today has zero benefits for men with maximum risk and comment down below what you think. Now some of you, just like me at some point, might still think that getting a prenup will protect you and save you from all of this madness. The prenup can be broken or declared invalid if the alimony provisions are set up too harshly, which means that even if you have a prenup, in many cases you will still have to pay something to your ex, especially if they are broke or struggling financially. Mistake number one, having a very uneven contract. Uh, the contract must protect both sides, and if it's only on one side where you're seeing all the protections, it might invalidate the prenuptial agreement. Each side must offer to the other something of value. You see, prenups are good in very specific cases, and most importantly, when there are no kids. Because as soon as you add kids to the mix, then your prenup won't do a damn thing against the avalanche of your ex can actually bring down on you. For starters, prenups are not allowed to dictate child support or custody. You can't dictate in your premarital agreement the amount of child support, and you can't dictate who will have the children. Which can bring up a whole list of problems. In fact, depending on where you file for divorce, the whole prenup could even become null and void if you do specify this in the prenup. And since judges in family court have an insane amount of power, they can simply throw out the entire prenup based on one invalid provision. There is no law in family court. There's only, there's only what the judge wants to do. It's for the judge to decide if the judge has weighed all the factors. The judge makes decisions for other people, and you make a hundred of those a day. And if you make a bad one, you just make another one. All judges have the same middle name, God. Yep, that God statement is actually pretty accurate. However, breaking up the prenup is just a start and things can get a lot worse than that. How about having to pay child support for 18 years on a kid that isn't even yours, but belongs to some random guy your ex slept with when you were still married? Sounds amazing, right? A divorced dad was ordered to pay child support for a child who isn't his legally. She was still married to Joe. Court papers clearly acknowledge the baby is not Joe's, but Albert Bush's. Now, luckily, we live in a society where that will almost never happen since the majority of women are virtuous. Is there too much, would you say, for body count? Yeah. yeah. At this point in our lives, 22 years old, I would say probably like 50 was yeah. my max. Would never cheat on you. Have you ever cheated before? Yes. Have you ever cheated? Yeah. What's happened? I've ended up breaking up with him and getting with his best mate. Have you ever cheated on anyone? Yes. Impressive thing I've ever done? I don't know, cheat on my boyfriend and not have him find out. And have no interest in abusing the family court system for their own personal financial gain. Domestic first of all, is defined so broadly. There's so many things that can count as domestic that it's not hard. It's not hard to be accused. Now, many women will downplay these cases and the basic idea of prenups, saying that most men don't even have enough gold to dig, so it's just about their silly insecurities. Set aside the fact that most people don't have enough gold to attract a gold digger, and we'll just talk about the underlying insecurity first. If a guy actually has money, he's not going to ask that question. Well, to that I say, yes, you are correct. Most men are not millionaires, but you know what? When you are forced to give someone half of $50 million, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to buy food and pay your rent. But if you make 50,000, like most people do, and now you have to support two households, then yes, you are completely f Not to mention that divorce can also greatly affect your retirement plans, since retirement savings and 401ks can actually be added to the divorce pile and divided up as well. So yeah, it's very easy for women to make fun of men who are not millionaires for worrying about prenups and divorce, but the reality is, if you are not a millionaire, you are going to feel the pain of a divorce 10 times worse. Women can easily dismiss these concerns about marriage since these concerns almost never affect them, 
And even in cases where men should get awarded alimony, courts are still heavily biased against men. In the last 40 years, I have had four cases that I remember of men getting alimony. So in theory, he should be entitled to alimony. But in my 20 years of experience, that does not happen frequently. Now getting back to that little 18 years of child support for a kid that isn't yours thingy. So imagine being forced to pay for child support despite proving that you are not the father. I'm told to pay child support for a kid that is not yours or go to jail. Or for a child that DNA tests prove isn't his. More than a, about a third of my pay. You see, when you legally marry someone, you automatically become a legal parent to all the children they bear, regardless if any of those kids are actually yours. His ex-wife had given birth. She had gotten pregnant during their separation by another man. And on top of that, in pretty much all Western countries, family law will always look at what's quote unquote best for the child. He told us it didn't matter who the biological dad is, only what's in the best interest of the child. So knowing all of this, it's simply hilarious how women dare to complain that marriage law is somehow suppressing them for literally the dumbest of reasons. Guess what? Weddings are sexist. Wedding traditions are deeply ingrained with misogyny. So let's rework a few, like dancing with a parent of a designated gender. What are some things you've noticed that are blatantly sexist but are so normalized. Oh, you're almost there. It's not just the whole, well, women are expected to change their last name. The amount of products that exist for women on their wedding day. Oh my God. Before you enter the chuppah, which is like the Jewish version of the altar, the bride circles around the groom seven times. It's supposed to symbolize that like, the husband is the center of the universe. The fact that it's so normalized for women to change their last name after getting married is beyond me. Yeah, a name change really stacks up to 18 years of child support payments for someone else's kid. Not to mention the fact that the guy has to beg your parents for your hand, buy an expensive ring, plan an elaborate proposal, get down on one knee, beg again, and then pay for the whole damn thing. Since, you know, equality and feminism really don't apply to women getting free sh Anyways, in the US, you can successfully challenge this in some states. However, there are many hurdles you will have to clear. And once child support is actually set by the court, it's going to be extremely difficult to remove this. In the past, legal marriage was mandatory since you couldn't date, live together, or raise a child without first getting married. And in addition to that, the chances of divorce and the cost of divorce was a lot lower back then. Nowadays, the risk involved in getting legally married are just way too high for men, and you really have to ask yourself, what's the point? In the 60s, it take a few months, a year. Now cases drag on five, six, seven, eight years. Which is extremely expensive, as you can imagine. So by never getting legally married, you already eliminate half of your problems. However, if you want to have kids, you're still going to be exposed to a vicious ex that wants to drain you financially or simply take your kids away. This is where the two women solution comes in. You see, by having kids with one woman from who you get full custody, and then by having a girlfriend who you live with, you can actually provide your children to both a father and a mother in their lives, while never having the risk of losing your kids or having to pay ridiculous child support or alimony payments. Now you might think that this solution is only possible for billion dollar athletes like Cristiano Ronaldo, but you're wrong. Plenty of normal, average earning men have actually arranged full custody over their kids by simply entering into an arrangement up front with a prospective mother, and this can cost as little as $15,000. Now you might hear that and think, that's a lot of money, but now think about the 18 years of monthly child support payments plus additional mortgage payments on a house you don't even live in, and then you realize that's a real bargain. Now for legal reasons, I can't get into the specifics of how to achieve this, but it's not that hard to figure out. In addition to this, there are several official surrogacy options in both the US and Europe, and even though surrogacy in the United States can easily cost $150,000 or more, it might be easier and cheaper to just buy a plane ticket and opt for the European option at around $30,000 to $50,000. Now you might ask, how can I actually support the surrogacy and semi-surrogacy out of wedlock alternatives to traditional marriage with my Catholic upbringing? Well, in all honesty, I don't like them either. However, I'm just giving you the realistic risk in society today with some realistic solutions to those problems. 
I would love to tell people, hey, just download a dating app, find a nice and caring person, get married without a prenup, then have beautiful babies together and live happily ever after. However, that's simply not the reality of the world we live in today. Because legal marriage today has simply become the signing of a very complicated financial contract which under normal circumstances you would never sign without an accountant and a lawyer present. But somehow when it comes to marriage people just want you to sign and believe in true love. This was the dark reality of divorce, please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos.